Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Memes of the Week. The best thing you can do for this channel is spank that like button to help this video reach a wider audience. But before I get on with the memes, first a word from today's sponsor, Thailand Inner Circle. JC has a YouTube channel helping the guys escape America and move to Thailand. He has a consulting business and one-on-one -on -one coaching. Plus he has a telegram group full of guys that can also help. He also teaches you to get into women's inner circles in Thailand if you know what I mean. But only regular women, because he won't trap you with any ladyboys. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Support him by subscribing to his channel and consider his coaching services. Sponsor link is down below. Number 1. Chinese tech companies are reportedly hiring cheerleaders to motivate their programmers. Their duties include buying breakfast, chit-chatting, and ping-pong. The real question is what kind of ping-pong? Is that their way of saying bumping nasties? In the West, we call women like this project managers. I can just see it now. All these guys working super hard to impress the hot cheerleader chick. Up next, people say that incels are the hateful ones. But after reading a post like this, where someone suggests that society unalives them, who's really the hateful one? If this were tried, incel men would unite and take over or have a coup because they would have sufficient numbers. Funny enough, the same people that say this consider themselves tolerant and capable of love while at the same time ending all the men they don't like. Number three, Petronella Wyatt is single, childless and alone, and claims that feminism has failed her generation. At least if she had chosen the bear, it would have eaten her and put her out of her misery quickly. When she said this, all I could hear was, this isn't my fault, but she failed herself. She needs to stop blaming the feminist ideology for her own choices. Try to enjoy your solitude, lady, because no man will ever care about you now. Moving on, guys need to find a woman like this that'll never look through their phone. Unfortunately, I saw a woman like this years ago on television, and like this one, she learned to use her feet as hands, so she could still spy on you. Remember that if she's blind, that's better than having no arms. She can still look through your phone, but she can't see anything. Number 5, BBC in Africa has decided to start using broken English in their stories. It sounds sort of like Jamaican Creole. This was also written for barely literate in English migrants to Great Britain. But the funny thing is, though, because it's so difficult to write like this, the stories tend to be more accurate and have less propaganda in them. They told this man he's not a British citizen after 42 years of living in the UK. Maybe he needs to leave because you know that Wakanda will still welcome him. Up next, Alex responds to Richard Cooper saying that over half the men, 18 to 29, have opted out of the dating pool entirely. No marriage, no dating, no hookups. They're just outs. So she's basically saying that MGTOW has now gone mainstream. She also uses this as an argument to defend single women that want to be married but can't find a man. Women's standards are too high, and they have the boss bitch attitude, so no wonder men are leaving the plantation. Number seven is a woman that tells other women not to be nice to unattractive men. Meanwhile, if you strip all that makeup, Instagram filters, fake lashes, and hair dye, she would also be an unattractive woman. Women treat men only as well as the men look. They don't value you by the quality of your character, but instead by the length of your bodily height and how handsome your face is. This woman looks like a dumb thumb and yet lashes out, and she's the one that calls men unattractive. Moving on, this female cuck or cuckette is complaining that her husband spends way too much money on his girlfriend. He's unemployed and she's paying for the two of them to go out and see each other. Looks to me like he's a high-value male, and she's afraid of losing him. So she's willing to share him and even pay for the privilege of doing so. Number nine, someone says that violence is never the answer. But this good boy travels more than 100 kilometers to bite its owner after being abandoned by him. The abandonment issues be real. This dog takes man's best frenemy to a whole new level. Google says that this story was from a fake satire website and untrue. But it's funny nonetheless. And I'm sure something like this happened at least a few times in history. Up next, gender equality sounds benign, and good for soy society. But it's just a Trojan horse filled with man-hating feminists, and it's also all about dominating males in civilization. If you don't believe me, then why did they just create a minister for changing male behavior in Australia? Number 11, a man needs to understand that the reason he protects his woman is not because she's weak, but he protects her because she's weak and retarded. I find that you have to supervise women like kids out in nature, otherwise they tend to get lost in the forest if you don't. For most of history, women had chaperones when they went out in public. I also find it ironic because this image is from the Vikings TV show where women would routinely beat up men. Moving on, I hope you enjoy the decline. 
Here's an example of a California town outraged because the traffic lights were replaced with stop signs to deter homeless people from stealing all the copper. I have a novel idea. How about we actually punish the criminals for a change? Tell me your country has failed without telling me your country has failed. Maybe they should try and solve the homeless problem instead. Yet they keep raising taxes on everyone. Number 13, this female crane operator complains that men stare at her constantly. With what? Binoculars. But I think that they do stare. With fear in their eyes that she's going to drop something on their heads. But this is just a woman with attention-seeking behavior. Any wise construction company won't allow a woman to operate a crane after seeing how the average woman drives a car. Up next is a new term called hagmaxing. It's when young Gen Z guys pursue long-term relationships with financially stable and experienced millennial ladies. Over the last 5-10 to 10 years, I've seen this trend of older women with younger men getting married in Canada. But the women weren't financially stable. Usually the guys had way more money than their women. I wonder though, is this any better or worse than granny maxing? But if the roles are reversed, it would be seen as predatory. Number 15 Marissa says that women who run a house and look after kids and prepare food for their spouse, being told that they aren't working, is one of the most successful conspiracies of the 20th century. But it's only when women fail in the corporate world do they actually want to go back to traditionalism. She probably couldn't succeed as an empowered feminist, so now she wants to be an empowered traditionalist. Moving on, this is probably what she's going to do to those multiple kids. She's probably going to get tired of the trad wife life and divorce her husband and take his house, claiming that she earned it by doing housework. Because after all, housework, according to her, is equal to corporate jobs. Either that or she's going to abandon them like this woman with no heat or running water for a month. Even after this, the family court will rule that she was just confused and give her full custody again. She probably just wanted her kids home alone to understand what Kevin McAllister feels like. Number 17, this woman asks, does anyone know how to remove this thing? Yes, by paying. But maybe it'll be like back in the 90s when people used to keep the price tags on their hats to signal to everyone that they actually stole them, which we knew they didn't. I'd keep that thing on or they're proof that I'm a bad boy criminal. But seriously, I find the worst thing is when some disgruntled employee forgets to take it off. Wink, wink. And then you have to drive back to the mall to have it removed. Up next, Stacy says if you don't date trans women, you don't like women. Well, it looks like maybe someone is desperate because they transitioned, but apparently not. And this is a fake post and she didn't say any of this. Looks like someone wanted to shame her because she says she's a model from the South and that she doesn't like Republicans. But if you don't date trans women, then you're not gay. Number 19 looks like things are over for this sniffer. The Biden campaign wants to hire a meme master as the president struggles for support from younger voters. Everyone except for him knows that the left can't meme. I'd imagine that if you want to qualify, you have to have at least 10 years experience lying. How's this for a meme that's going to influence the youth? And here's a picture of the meme manager. Looks like someone beat me to the shelter punch because in Western Australia, they're getting their first shelter for men who are victims of domestic violence. But do we men really need shelters? After all, only 53% of domestic violence is committed by women. Women want to shut down men's shelters because they're male-only spaces, where they worry that men will teach each other about female nature, away from the prying eyes of women. They are the perfect red-pilling portals to them. Number 21, soon it'll be over for women. AI will be trustworthy and supportive and have quiet mode. Soon it'll be over for the real ladies. But seriously... Imagine lines of code having more personality and soul than a woman. Women will have no way to step up and save themselves from it. One of my favorite films, Cherry 2000, will finally become a reality. Except reality will have a much happier ending. Up next, 14 years ago, this guy bought these two pizzas for 10,000 Bitcoin, which are now worth over $700 million today. May 22nd is now celebrated as Bitcoin Pizza Day. Subsequently, he spent around 100,000 Bitcoins in the summer of 2010, now worth $7 billion. But remember, they could have just as easily gone back to zero back then. Well, at least he has this story to tell. Number 23, how do you lose a woman? Just be a good guy. They hate that stuff because a guy that's quiet and nice is boring. They crave drama instead. Remember, if you're mean, it keeps them keen. If you're assertive, competent, are stern and have higher success than they do, then they'll respect you and follow your lead. If you don't have those things, and you're a nice guy, they'll just laugh in your face and won't follow you and eventually leave you. They are chaos seeking order. Moving on, when you're paying $14 for a Big Mac, remember that this is how they're drawing the mop over your $7 french fries. 
Now you know where the unique french fry taste comes from with the McMahon fries. I can't wait until the robots replace fatty McFry cook here and literally mops the floor with her. But I wonder if that's a mop head or possibly a lost weave after some sisters fought over some stale french fries. I hope the customers enjoy the added protein. Number 25 and the last one here is what the Disney princesses look like in real size beauty. Whatever that's supposed to mean. I suppose that being obese is the majority right now. If Disney does this, then they'll just normalize heart disease, I'm afraid. Here's a question. Why is riding a moped like having sex with a Disney princess? Because both are fun until a friend catches you doing it. As far as I'm concerned, the one on the bottom left looks like Adele before the weight loss. So that's it for another Memes of the Week. Please give this video a like to push it up in the algorithm and so new viewers can find it. If you enjoyed this series and want me to keep making it, then donate it to PayPal and subscribe star links below. It really helps out. Anyways, enjoy the rest of your day and cheers.